and now we pray to dear God that this doesn't fall. I didn't plan on doing this. I got a package and I unboxed it for y'all, which you're gonna see after this. And in between, I wanted to tell a little backstory. And then when I started, I realized that, oh, this is not a short backstory. So I decided to just put this out there and then build on this general backstory that I'm gonna tell y'all right now. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. I will not talk a lot about my family because it feels unfair and I just want to respect everybody and anybody so that's why this is going to be very general and then along the way I'm gonna build on my experience with these things and how I am now and all that if we don't come to this today which knowing me we might uh, and I'll try to keep this as short as possible now I didn't grow up in a very Christian religious family I started Sunday school because I wanted to fit in which is the first story about my bullying experience, I never really felt connected to that at all. It didn't feel right. And then looking at the financial aspect of that, that was the main reason that I quit. Now imagine this, a 12 year old girl quit Sunday school because a 12 year old girl realized that this is supposed to be teaching us a religion, a belief system, a support system, and yet we're going basically bankrupt because of this because you need to buy the books and you need to donate this much money and then the rides and then the money at church and it's like yo what no i did the math i couldn't do it anymore the amount of money that my parents spent on that in that time that didn't coincide with what i got out of it which was in hindsight nothing because I, it felt forced and I didn't believe it. It didn't feel right for me. With that being said, I never tried to go back to force myself into one religion, to force myself into certain beliefs. Um, but ever since I was little, I, I felt this calmness and a sense of belonging. When I was in nature and I didn't think about anything else. I was walking through the river and didn't think about jack shit and just looked around me and, and watched the birds fly and tried not to drown and tried to not think about that there might be an orca in the river which I know there is no way the hell that that's happening I just have a thing with orcas um, but they're booms but they're scary as shit my grandma also always believed in astrology and she had crystals and she was old school in a sense of like no modern phones no modern computers no like fancy foods and all that and she spent a lot of time outside she believed in certain spiritual things and i kind of grew up with that my parents also showed some glimpses of that through my growing up those glimpses were in certain periods of time really frequent you know i grew up with walk barefoot and trust your gut feeling oh my god and i remember uh my granny and then my mother had had these little like you know the energy coasters and we always put water bottles on that and like asking your freaking necklace questions not it was i unknowingly kind of fell into that tumblr helped i miss it so goddamn much i learned the most about astrology on tumblr and i miss it so much because i follow such amazing accounts and then delete it all and it feels wrong to restart that chapter you know so i fell into astrology with that and then consequently crystals two years ago i got a book from uh, i don't want to fuck up her name from lisa lester called witch and it's a little book about witchcraft and that really helped me define what i was doing which even as a little kid i was witched outside making well, not necessarily potions, but like soups that I would then drink as well. And my grandma had a little, well, she still does, a little creek. And I was always there, just going off. Ever since, I've been more interested in witchcraft as well. It's nice to have a, a little guide with certain things. Because, you know, in astrology, you have, okay, this sign is sort of that. A rising sign means this. Jupiter affects that and all that. It was nice to, to get that in witchcraft as well. Uh, this is another day. This is the day the video comes out. Because I've edited the whole thing and realized that I forgot to mention a lot of things. What I really wanted to say and 
for God somehow was that all that listen to your gut talk, you know, you got to follow it. And I've seen with myself, I compare that to animal instinct, like cats, for example. I feel like that is a really accurate representation of what I'm about to elaborate on. I've always had a really strong gut feeling and a really intense inner feeling of get the hell away from this person, situation, group, whatever. But as previously mentioned, because the system has fucked me up to the point where I stopped listening to myself, I didn't listen to those feelings. Guess what happened? Um, and, uh, you know, my... I don't know if any of my friends are watching this, probably, maybe. You know, they know, like, new people came into our lives and I didn't like them. I had no concrete reason, no, nobody wronged me in any way. But there was just something, you know what I'm saying? I just had this bad feeling that something was going to happen. And if I was put in a group with them, fine, you know, we're going to make it work, don't get me wrong. But, you know, there was just something off. And I always told that, my friends, like, I have no solid reason for not trusting that person, for not wanting you to hang out with the person. I don't. All I got is a gut feeling. And so far, it has always been right. Fast forward two years later, it's freaky because, again, like, I have no really reason on paper. Or, like, you know, I have no palpable reason for not trusting a person. But it's just Sun's off, you know. When you have that feeling, you gotta listen to it. I wish I would listen to it. I didn't. In some ways, came out a lot better. In some ways, oh god. Um, yeah, that also. And just for example, I guess really apparent with me is uh, the amount of jewelry I wear. And I've always worn a lot of jewelry. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, you know, I like these things, but I feel some people, they look at me and they think it's crazy because like right now, this is, this is a normal amount of jewelry. This is my day-to-day, -day, I go to sleep with this, I shower with this kind of thing. We got, there's six rings. Oh God. We got three, yeah, we got three necklaces. So three rings on this side, three rings on this side. One, two, three, four bracelets. These are hair ties. And you know, people just think it's crazy or that there's no need for it. And I respect where they're coming from. However, all of this means something to me. Wearing this jewelry, I carry something that I want to carry with me all the time. Now, mind that one, two, three, three more rings usually come on here as well. I'm the kind of person that never does something without, without meaning. I have a reason for everything, even if it might be hidden, even if it might not be logical to most, even if it's impulsive, and it becomes a lot for me, for people around me, and you know, not to toot my own horn, but I just wanna, a great, great friend of mine said this to me, and um, you know, after everything that's happened, it really does help to think about that. We were talking about how, yeah, you know, it, it becomes a lot when you're an intense person, when you're a little bit, a little crazy. It becomes a lot for, not just, again, for yourself, but for people around you, for people who don't truly understand how to make all of it work and what to do with you, especially in bad times. And she's been by my side to a lot of shit and she said that you know yeah you're you're a fucking lot woman but in the end with you it's all worth it yeah there's bad times yeah there's shit on shit on fucking shit but in the end when you come out of it it's all fucking worth it you get more out of it then you really put in. And you know, get yourself people like that. If your friends don't appreciate you enough to be there through thick and thin, to be there through all your fucking craziness, then they ain't your friends. Baby, no, completely different topic, but no. Um, because, you know, not a lot of people, I guess, understand what spirituality means. Because it means something different to everybody and it's hard to understand and sometimes it's these weird fucking things that you'll never understand that we barely understand hey, if i have this urge to light a goddamn candle and sit in peace i will light a candle and sit in peace i have no concrete reason to do that it's my gut feeling it's 
it's this inside force. You can't do jack shit about it. I can't do jack shit about it. I can either ignore it and self-sabotage myself, or I can listen to it. Yeah, so I think, I think I've covered all that I wanted to cover, so proceed with the normal fucking scheduling, okay? Do I define myself? Do I present myself as a witch? If anybody ever asks me what I am, I am so many things that I... I don't wanna ever define what I am because I feel like I'll forget to mention certain things and I'll define myself as something I'm not or I'll define just three quarters of myself because I'll forget that one quarter and I don't wanna do that to myself. It's unfair. It's not okay. I'm so... I'm... I'm a lot. <laughs> yeah, so now we're at witchcraft. Also worth mentioning my imagination is it's really intense, it's really good, and a lot of times also overwhelming because I, and now we're gonna sort of get into the bullying aspect, I, I, was, I didn't really have any real friends for, well I'm 21, for, so for most of my life, and I automatically did everything in my head. And I imagined things and I and I lived through things in my head, created you know, all those imaginary scenarios that were that was mine twenty four seven. So I developed my imagination to the point where six months ago I actually was afraid that it was affecting me because I was afraid that I am living out too many situations in my head instead of out here. So I'm working on that. Speaking of my mind, imagination, all that, my subconscious is also really strong and some of you know this, some don't. I've always had a really vivid dream. I've also always had dreams that were kind of freaky because then that happened in real life and I was like, whoa, just an example. About six months before, before my breakup with my first boyfriend, I had dreams of being raped or almost raped almost every single night. Like that was once a month, twice a month. That was five to six times a week. And it was freaking me out. I didn't know what to do. And then when we broke up, it stopped. And I, I, like, I'm no expert in any of this, but I did my, my research and I still do my research. For those six months, my subconscious knew that I was in a relationship in which I didn't want to be in anymore. It was, you know, it was horrible because I cared about him so much. But then I had to take care of myself too. Another example would be, and this is really recent, this is like this week, there's a road over the hill, right? And there's a few turns, and I dreamt that it was closed, and me and, like, me and my mother were driving, we were trying to get to the city, and it was closed off, the lights, there weren't signs, and we had to turn around. And that happened twice in the dream, and went on my fucking day, so that was Saturday. And then I went to work on Saturday, and then I met up with a friend, and he drove me home. And we took the usual route, the fastest route, which is over that hill. We drive to it, and there's a car straightening around. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, turn around, I fucked up, okay, whatever. And then next to the car, there's a person waving, making signs, like, turn around, turn around. So we do turn around. And then my friend asks, like, what's going on? Is it closed off? Is, what's happening? And the dude says, yeah, it's closed off. There's been an accident. And in my mind, I'm like, what? Huh? And I tell my friend, like, I, I dreamt about this today. So I come home, I see my dad inside, but I don't see my mom in the living room area. So I'm like, where's mom? And I, I guess he didn't hear it. He was like, oh, just help me carry out some shit from the car. So we go out and I ask again, like, where is mother? And he's like, ah, she walked from the store back home over the hill. And I'm like, what? When? <laughs> like half an hour ago. In that moment, I did start a panic. Houston, we have a problem. Long story short, I called my mother, she was fine, but she comes home and I tell her, like, it, it's closed off, there's been an accident. She tells us, yeah, I know, I saw. Why? At the start of the hill, there's multiple ways up. She said that just, there was this gut feeling, like, take the forest route. As long as you can see the houses, it's fine, just take the forest route. And when she was on the same level, that accident happened. She didn't really see it through, like, she didn't see the car and the person, because there's a couple of trees there. She watched the thing go down, and she said, like, if I didn't trust the good feeling, I'd be right there. So, 
there's things like that. For so long, I, I haven't really let myself be like this because there was always something, for example, work, school, whatever, that prevented me from like fully giving into this. But I'm trying, slowly but surely, because it really does help. I am editing this, finally. And I really just wanted to pause and emphasize this part right here and just bring attention to how the fuck is this so normalized? How the fuck is a system that is literally killing people inside out, taking away their freedom, literally, taking away their freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of artistic expression away from them. How is that normalized? Why is that okay again? How, wh why did we somehow accept this? Hell to the fuck no. You know, I had to take a pause on my fucking job because I fucking couldn't do it anymore. I had to take a pause on my fucking life because I could not fucking do it anymore. And I'm gonna bring this back to relationships. I had to end that fucking thing too. Because at the end of the day, I was at some point, and that doesn't refer to the relationship I mentioned before in the video, but I at some point was like a stay at home fucking mother to a grown ass fucking adult. And then I had to do college and then I had to do work and then I had to take care of my own goddamn life. And excuse me, since fucking when? And that was okay, apparently. Bitch, 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 please, please. And I can do a video on that. I would love to do a video on that, okay? And we're gonna have commentary all the fuck around. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna call all my buds, okay? We're gonna have a picnic. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a whole group thing, okay? Because it's insane how normalized that is. And that is a completely different topic, but let me just kind of give you a little taste of what's about to come. How fucking insane it is that when a woman sees the relationship is toxic, she's considered bitchy. And she's considered too much because I don't want to wipe your ass at 23 years old, baby. <laughs> Hun, you have a mommy, okay? And I have a pussy. You don't need another mommy. I don't need another pussy. Both fucking closed. What the fuck? And I also wanted to say that if you feel like you need to take a fucking break, take a goddamn break. Everything else can fucking wait. Everything else in that moment does not matter anymore. Trust me, okay? I burnt out. I never in my life thought I could burn out because I've always been doing so many things at once, but I did. Was it worth it? No. No, because I didn't... I wasn't doing what I loved. I was doing them to prove something to the people that treat me like absolute fucking crap. Honestly. Uh, and, and if any of you are watching this, baby honestly so yeah if you need a fucking break take a fucking break you don't owe anybody anything okay you go wherever the fuck you are whatever the fuck you are take your fucking break disappear go to the motherfucking bahamas sip your pina coladas and motherfucking chill out okay and then come back when you're ready enjoy the rest that that's that <laughs> And as I said, I'm, I'm learning, I'm getting my things, as you'll see, I'm so excited about this. It's a clothing for a little business, and I saw it, and I fell in freaking love with the things they have. I had to get it. I guess to end this, I just want to say that this really general backstory of how this spiritual thing came to be, let me just say that A, I will do more videos on this, of course, in depth on certain aspects of this whole thing. Second of all, you don't have to be a certain way or do certain daily tasks to be able to say that, oh, I'm spiritual, oh, I'm a witch, oh, I'm this, that. I a lot of times forget about my crystals, my gut feeling. I forget to listen to it. I forget about the fact that my dreams are so vivid and so kind of freaky. But then I come back to it. And that's important that you keep coming back home like I did with music, because you should always keep your, your fucking bass somewhere, somewhere in here, okay? I always start filming this when I'm at my worst, visually, but I just got this, and, and, and I'm sorry I had to open it for the gram, but we're here now. The natural lighting is best here, so we're gonna do this here. So we got stickies, and look at the pretty sticky. Beautiful. I'm glad I got three. And then we got some cards, which we're gonna... 
to read about later. And I got sage. I thought it was a bandana, but it's it's uh, natural paper. All paper is bloody natural. Um, it's like hand handmade, naturally made, not chemically pro. Whatever the fuck. You know the kind of paper that like yeah. This was once Mother Nature. You know. Okay. First of all, this is wood. It's okay. We're we're gonna clean. It's fine. Life is fine. Okay. First of all, this is huge. I, I can't, if I am ever able to get y'all a discount code, do you know what, I'm manifesting it, finessing it, fuck yeah. You need this in your life. This is my new baby. It's more pinkish in person. Let's figure out what the hell is, we'll, we'll see. Slowly but surely. I got no clue. Because you see there's three cards there. And I've connected two of them. So this one's left. But this is a rock. 15 minutes later. It's a rock. Look at this. There y'all go. Oh, this is a wand. Oh, I don't want to break this. And now I'm going to go put all this away. And yeah. So yeah, this is it. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing and I hope you enjoyed the little backstory. If y'all want any specific videos on this whole thing, drop ideas down below. You know, I'm going to do it anyways, but if y'all want to see anything really, really specific or hear anything really specific, freaking gladly. And there's just a lot and it's, it's hard deciding on what to start with. Lots of exciting upcoming projects are coming. And remember, slow progress is still progress and you're doing great. And thank you for watching.